Hello my lovely people, today I'm doing the middle grade book tag. Uh, no one tagged me to do this tag, I just wanted to, because as I have mentioned a number of times, having a middle grade moment, so I thought let's celebrate that. Um, I saw this tag on Bookish Channel, and it's originally by Amanda at The Curly Reader, I will link both down below for you. I'm just going to dive in with some prompts. Um, question number one is, what is the last middle grade book you read? I am actually currently reading middle grade book. This is um, Tilly and the Book Wanderers by Pages & Co. This is actually a proof copy, but um, it's lovely. I am um, about a third of the way through and having an absolutely lovely time so far. It is all about Tilly, who um, is looked after by her granny and granddad. In um, They own a bookshop called Pages & Co. And it becomes apparent that maybe some of your favourite book characters can come outside of the book and talk to you, and maybe you can maybe go inside of the book too. But there's also sort of a mystery element at play here at the edges as well. Um, I am only a third of the way through, but I'm having a thoroughly lovely time so far. It is um, super engaging, really easy to read, and um, there's very much just a love of books and reading at the core of this. So I'm having a great time, and I will be posting a book chat with my thoughts on that at some point in the future. Um, question number two is, what is a middle grade book someone read to you as a child? Um, my granddad, when we slept over theirs, would always read us stories before we went to sleep. I really remember him reading all of the famous five books to us. I think he might have read some Sherlock Holmes, which is not middle grade, but I do think he also read us some Sherlock Holmes. Um, I just, I can't remember what else he might have read, but I, I remember really treasuring and valuing those moments, which was absolutely lovely. Um, what was your favourite middle grade book as a child? 100% the entirety of The Edge Chronicles. I've just got The Curse of the Globe Loser here to show you. Um, Paul Stewart, illustrated by Chris Riddell. Absolutely wonderful series, which I have talked about all the time, mention it all the time. I really want to do a reread of this because I haven't reread the books in years. And I would just, I think it would be a really lovely little escape to do. I think that would be nice. So The Edge Chronicles is set on the edge, um, and there's like a floating city of Sanctifrax and the Deep Woods and blah, blah, blah. They follow, um, there are a number of different series within this. They are all set in the same world, but they're set at different times in the world. Um, I think Chris Riddell's illustrations just highlight some of the amazing inventions of Paul Stewart. I think they work so well in tandem and I just absolutely adored this as a child. It was, the whole thing was my absolute favourite. The next question is, what is your favourite middle grade book as an adult? That's a really hard question and I actually think the question's going to be answered in the next question's answer. So I thought I would give you a, a new recent favourite. So I recently read and really enjoyed The Extremely Inconvenient Adventures of Bronte Metalston by Jacqueline Moriarty. Um, this was one which um, is one of the reasons that sparked me off on a bit of a middle grade moment, if I'm honest with you. Um, just like a story which, if you read it as a kid, there's some really lovely adventures to be had and stuff like that. If you read it as an adult, there are a couple of really um, valuable messages about I don't know how you live your life and blah blah blah. I just thought it was absolutely fantastic. It follows Bronte Metalston. She grows up with her aunt. They get a letter one day that says her parents have been killed by pirates, but they've left her this sort of like um, list of things that she has to do, and it involves going around and visiting all of her aunts, because she has about 11 aunts, and she has to give them each a gift. And obviously, adventures unfold. There is more than initially meets the eye going on and I just it was absolutely magical and it reminded me of how much I love middle grade which is what has prompted me to now explore middle grade more more thoroughly so um, I would credit this as a new favorite um, that I have discovered as an adult and um, I also really love the cover <laughs> I think it's great um, question after that is who is your favorite middle grade author so this is the answer that i could have given for the previous question because i think my favorite middle grade author despite not being exclusively a middle grade author is catherine m valenti and her fairyland series this is the i want to say second book in the fairyland series because i have lent the first book out to a friend um i just think that this series is it has all those things that i particularly value in a middle grade series similar to bronte metalstone actually um, that thing of when you read it as a child, it's just got all these wonderful, um, fantastic ideas and adventures and stuff going on, and then you read it as an adult, and actually there's a lot of really important messages being given across to you here and stuff like that, and I just, 
it touches me in my very soul and I again I want to do a reread of this whole series soon because it's absolutely gorgeous it's about a girl called September who is swept away on the green wind to fairyland where she has adventures um, and there is a lot more going on under the surface she befriends a wyverly called A2L who is a cross between a wyvern and a library and I just just wonderful. I, I heartily recommend it to all ages. What middle grade book do you think should be required reading in school? I didn't put an answer down for this one because, to be honest with you, I can't actually really remember the types of middle grade books that I read at school. I remember the books that I read in my own time. I don't really remember anything that I studied when I was that age. I remember books that I studied at secondary school but not at primary school at all. So um, I don't really know what to put down for that one because I was like, really i'd be like yes read my favorite series yeah but also like i don't something that would be universal enough i don't know so i didn't put anything down um what is your favorite middle grade book cover so i do love kj malford who did this cover he does a number of covers i think they're all beautiful i gathered three which have been recent favorites so another kj malford cover is Pockin and Stubbs by Sophie Green. I've picked this one because um, a lot of his covers are in this style, which is very typical of his style. This one, I think he's done such a great job of adapting to what this book is. This is a delightful sort of like riffing off of crime noir with elements of supernatural mystery going on. Um, it's about Lil Popkin, who's a detective, who meets this boy in a bus station who holds the clue to a mystery, and she's trying to unravel it. I think this cover is gorgeous. It continues on to the back, um, and also it's it's a matte texture, which I think really adds to it, and I just love, like, this so encapsulates to me, like, the type of, like, noir crime thing that's going on, and um, I just think it's gorgeous. Um, another one is, this is actually the proof cover, not the official cover, but the official cover is also lovely. But this is The Wild Folk by Sylvia V. Lensted, um, which is the first book in the Stargold Chronicles. Yeah, it's just lovely. I love a little bit of gold. You know that. I know that. We all know that. Um, but this is a really lovely middle grade series that is kind of, um, there's a girl who grows up in the countryside, there's a boy who grows up in the city. They each um, befriend a little hare who are twins, and um, then they go on an adventure where they end up meeting, and it's very much there's a very strong ecological preservation message at the heart of this which is about making sure that we um, value nature and don't do irredeemable harm to it and stuff like that and also it's delightful i really need to read the second book in the series because it's great um, and then finally is a book i haven't actually read yet but i think it's going to be a favorite and the cover regardless is definitely a favorite this is a pinch of magic by michelle harrison i know that this has been all over booktube recently many people are loving it i am very excited to love it I just think that this illustration, its style is so beautiful, even the back with this mermaid on, I just think that this is absolutely stunning and a piece of art. Um, this is about um, three sisters who are living under some sort of curse, um, I think it means that they can't escape their tower or something, I'm not 100% sure because I haven't read it yet, I'm going to be reading this very soon, I'm very excited, but objectively I think it's one of my favourite covers of all time regardless of genre or age range, I just think it's gorgeous. Um, the final question is, what is your favourite middle grade book to screen adaptation? I got a little bit stumped because, to be honest with you, I couldn't think of a lot that I thought were done well. I think there were a lot that were done fine, but, um, so I went for, um, I actually really liked the recent Historic Materials TV show adaptation. I thought they did a really great job, especially Mrs. Coulter. I think that that casting was inspired, and I think that a lot of the acting decisions that they made with that um, to parallel her and Lyra gave me a number of feelings. So, and especially in comparison to the film, I just thought they did a really great job. Um, I also, when I was a kid, I really loved the film adaptation of A Little Princess. I would definitely say that the film adaptation is a different entity to the book, especially because they changed the major plot details, which do make it veer quite differently. But I think I don't mind films changing plot details as long as it sort of preserves like a heart and a feeling of the, of the original source. And I think they change plot details that are quite major, but in a way that still encapsulates like really what like the message and stuff of the story was. And um, I think that film adaptation was lovely and I was like obsessed with it as a child. Um, and I also think that Matilda is a really good adaptation of a book that sort of stands on its own and sort of has 
you can watch Matilda and get so much out of it, regardless of if you've read the book, even though they are a little bit different, again, because that is the nature of adapting things. I just think it, it stands on its own very well as, like, a good, enjoyable film. Um, yes, that's it. That's everything I wanted to talk about. If I'm going to tag people, I would like to tag Miriam at Between Lines and Life, because I know for one thing that you've also read this, <laughs> and I'd be interested to see if you have any other middle grade thoughts. Um, if you fancy it, I know you don't do a lot of tags, but I am going to tag Matt at NCS Books because he's given me very good middle grade recommendations. Um, so yes. And I'm trying to think of anyone who I know reads a lot of middle grade. And I'm coming up with a blank because I didn't prepare the story of my life. Um, I think I'm going to leave it there, I'm just going to tag the two of you. However, if you're watching this and you're like, oh my god, Sophie, you should have tagged me, I love middle grade, um, let me know. <laughs> I'd love to watch your video when you do it. Um, but yeah, so that's everything I wanted to talk about this week. Do you read a lot of middle grade? What is your favourite middle grade? Do you have any recommendations for me? I'd love to hear all of this and more in the comments down below. But otherwise, I hope you're having the loveliest of days, and I'll see you next time for something different. <laughs>